Okay, wrestling fans, welcome to GW Total Access Wrestling. Your host, Bob McCarthy, now, along with the living, living legend, the one and only. The, did I say living legend, one and only? What else? You've already different? screwed up about four times, okay? You've already tongue tied. You're just an awesome man. You're a living legend. You got your cheesy radio voice. Listen, here we are, the wrestling show. Just, no, no, no. just, just shut your mouth, okay? All right. Just shut your mouth and be quiet. And let me take over. You want to raise? You want to raise? Yes, I do, sir. I don't want to hear you talk. Okay. Yeah. You don't want to hear me talk. You want to hear Chris Jericho, the first ever undisputed champion and a larger than life living legend. Is on your little wrestling show. That's what people want to hear. Exactly. And that living legend, uh, you didn't win the title this past Thursday. What's up with that? Hollywood Hulk Hogan, SmackDown, the main event. Tell us about you and Hollywood. Your chance to get the undisputed title. Everything's going your way. No DQ. What happened, Jericho? Did you watch the match? Yes, I did. Well, then you know what happened. You saw me beat the hell out of Hollywood Hulk Hogan. You saw me beat his ass, make him look like a fool, uh, pretty much put him in retirement, almost drive the stake through Hulkamania. And then that big nose little bastard Triple H got his nose stuck in my business again twice. And uh, he caused me to lose that match. Unfairly, I was cheated, obviously. But we'll see what happens over the next couple of weeks. I'm still going to put a stake in Hulk and Mania. I'm going to put a stake in Triple H Mania as well. Junior. Exactly. Chris, you've made a lot of history this past year. A man for your size. You're a four-time WWE Cruiserweight Champion. You have the Intercontinental title, the European title, the Hardcore title. And the one thing is that a man your size would never be World Champion. Well, you proved the doubt is wrong. You went on to win the WCW Championship and the WWE Championship, the first ever Undisputed Championship. And you headlined WrestleMania as the first Undisputed Champion. What were your feelings going to WrestleMania? First of all, I mean, how do you mean a man my size? Well... Uh, a cruiserweight, someone of your level. They go a cruiserweight. What, what is Name it? someone that's been a cruiserweight champion and won the world title at the same time. I think you're the only one. Let me just say this too as well. Though. People thought that a guy your size would never actually host a little uh, wrestling show. And they and were wrong. wrong. Exactly. Just like you. They said a man your size would never be able to fit back behind this counter. Yeah. You can prove them wrong on that as well. And they also true. said I couldn't need to be Chris Jericho, but guess what? I can't. proved them wrong. I really can't. No, no. I, I pretty much care in this interview. Uh, uh, yeah, main event in WrestleMania with Triple H. It was, it was the, you don't get any higher than that. Yeah. To walk into WrestleMania in Canada as the champion was... Uh, was the biggest honor of my career and the biggest honor of Triple H's career to have the, uh, the, the thrill of facing Chris Jericho in the main event for the championship. Now, your father was a famous um, hockey player, and Ted Irving, now, you didn't go into hockey. I'm doing an interview, hold on. I'm doing an interview, I'll call you back. Nice. Your father, a uh, famous hockey player, L.A. Kings, uh, many others. And usually you follow your father's footsteps. Rangers, baby, Rangers. 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 Why didn't you become a hockey player? Why, how did you get in the love of pro wrestling? I was a hockey player. But you loved it. You loved pro wrestling more. Yes, I love pro wrestling more. But you obviously haven't seen... Hold on, fill the phone's for you. Thank this you. This is my agent tell will call back. You've obviously seen... Uh, you, watch, you see me playing the celebrity yep. games. Yeah. Square Garden. You see me win the MVP every year, score yep. a goal every single year. Yep. So basically I'm keeping the hockey, the hockey side alive. Uh, wrestling is the day job. Hockey is the side job just to play these celebrity games and awe the people and show them who the true Mr. Hockey really is. It's me, it's Mr. Exactly. And tell us about the hard training camp there. You mentioned on Tough Enough. You keep saying exactly for me. You just give me the, this. Exactly? Yeah, exactly. That's what I said. It's the worst segue ever. Do some segue. Well, what would be a good answer? Well, uh, we're talking about hockey. So speaking of hockey, I mean, obviously. Speaking of hockey, hockey Tough game, Enough comes to my mind. Five years you said some of the hearts. Is that what you were going yes, to say? Yes, the heart training. Yeah. Okay, you would say something along the lines of, well, speaking of hockey, very popular sport in Canada, very popular sport in Calgary. And speaking of Calgary, that's where Stu Hart, the Hart Brothers, Pro Wrestling Camp is, which incidentally you went to. Then you would say, but it's the next question, which is, boy, I forgot. No, you'll be the hearts. Um, you're training with the hearts. Okay, how, was it, how was it? Um, you talked about you and Lance Storm. Th uh, I believe it was about three months. You did the last two guys that survived the training. Yeah, the, training the, the last two guys, the only two guys. I mean, we started out with like, I think 15 guys in our camp, and we ended up with me and Lance, the only guys that ever actually did anything. Um, it was it was tough. You know, it was like Japanese style training in the dojo, so to speak, and stretched the hell out of you, and uh, really taught you respect and discipline for the business. So it was a good way to train. And let's talk about what about Mexico? what kind of training do you have to do this show? I have lots of training. Should, let, let's hear some. You want to hear my accolades? Not really, but let's hear a few of them. Well, the men I've interviewed, some of the great superstars of the wrestling world, uh, Diamond Dallas Page, George the Animal Steel, Brutus Beefcake, Greg Valentine, New Jack. Um, who do we have? Jimmy Lawler, three times in a row. We just three times in a row. Three, three times. times. The King. 
Do you know? Did you just wake up one morning and say, I'm going to have my own wrestling show? And just... Well, I actually woke up this morning and said, I'm going to interview Chris Jericho. Right, 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 right. Okay. So, I'll let's continue. All right. So your um, dream has come true. Yes, it has come true. Yep. All right. So, so next the last question here. I need to wrap this up. I all right. Think. I got more things to do than to talk to you uh, here in front of this. Sports World and Everett. Well, thanks to Phil Castanetti. Thanks to Phil. Sports yep. World Everett. Come down, Broadway. Your favorite, favorite guy on Broadway. Uh, sports memorabilia needs, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and let's just say, what do you think about Boston when you come in? Oh, actually, I, I like Boston. You know, I don't like the construction. It's funny because we've been in Boston. I've probably been coming for about seven years, and the construction has gotten even worse. Nothing ever gets built here. They just keep tearing things down. When is it going to be ready? Well, I'll let you know. I'm not in charge of that, but... Well, you live in Boston. Did you read yeah. the paper? Yeah, I read the paper. Well, actually, I know how to read. I don't know how to do interviews. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only living legend, Y2J, Chris Jericho. That is the worst cheesy radio voice I've ever heard. <laughs>